welcome to the Carnegie South Public Library Adult Services Podcast. Uh, this is our second second try at this here. We are all recording from remote locations at this time, so please bear with us. We're learning the technology as we go. So you might hear, you know, dogs barking, cats meowing, you know, other things happening. Who knows? Uh, I want to give you a few PSAs um, before we get into anything here. First of all, the library is closed to the public right now. If you have items checked out, please hang on to them. You don't need to return them until the library reopens. If you have items on hold, don't worry. Your holds will not expire. You will be in the same place in line when the library reopens. Um, also, if you have things that you normally cannot return unless you return them inside the library, again, just hang on to them until the library reopens. So basically, you can't do anything with your stuff until the library reopens, so that's pretty much our message. So just hold on to it, enjoy them. We're not going to charge you any fines, we're not going to punish you, we're not going to turn off your access to the ebooks or the audiobooks. If something does go wrong and you're not able to access them, give us a call or send us an email and we will help you figure that out. And wash your hands. Absolutely. Wash your hands. 20 seconds every time. <laughs> you don't have to sing happy birthday, but just sing for 20 seconds. <laughs> All righty. So we thought we'd kind of do a little bit of a Q&A here with uh, Sarah, and I'm Amy, by the way, yes. just Hello. because, you know, we thought you might be wondering what we're doing while the library's closed. It's one of the most frequent questions we get. What is it that librarians do all day? Do you just read books? Okay, so I can honestly say in about 10 years, I have maybe read two books and not whole books, just like a chapter or two books while I've been at the library. So I almost never read when I'm here. And then it's just because we needed to recheck something before we go into a book club discussion. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's always my book club book because <laughs> I like to wait till the last minute. Um, what else do we do? Well, mostly what we're doing is sitting at a public desk and helping people with the questions as they come up to us. Um, so you never quite know what you're going to be doing from minute to minute. No, it's, uh, yeah, every day is different. That is for sure. Um, you could be giving out phone numbers. You could be looking up obituaries. You could be finding the lost recipe for Dubuque canned ham. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Actual questions that we have gotten. So you never know. But in between questions, we had to find other ways to fill our time. So you might have noticed lately, if you've been in the library, that there have been a lot of empty shelves, particularly in the nonfiction section. So what we've been doing is what we call shifting and weeding. So those are words you will hear a lot in libraries. Um, shifting is basically we are moving books from one shelf to another. That's it. That's the extent of what we're doing. So if there's an empty shelf here and this shelf over there is very full, we just sort of even out by moving everything evenly spaced. So it's... Just more pleasant yeah. to browse through. Absolutely. And then the other thing we do is weeding, and it's exactly what it sounds like. We go through and we pull out books that are in bad shape or have not checked out in five or more years, because if we don't get rid of the old stuff, we can't add new stuff, and we always want to have fresh new items for people to enjoy. Or so. if it's like a super popular author or series like Lee Child, and the first book in that series has chunks of pages falling out, we want to get that out of the collection and replace it with a brand new copy that's not falling apart or covered in Cheeto stains. Yes, Cheeto stains. Cheetos and books do not mix, people, so that is a good thing to remember. Chocolate in books doesn't really mix either, and coffee in books, uh, that could be problematic as well. Use a lid. Lids yes, use good. a lid. Lids are very important. Uh, what else? Oh, the other thing we do is, um, so we're always ordering new materials. Yes. Lots of time. So there's a lot of time that we spend researching what is new that's coming out by a brand new author? Like, is it worth buying? Is it popular? What series are popular? And do those authors have new installments in that series coming out? Um, and that's really difficult because if you think of the number of authors out there, I mean, you have the James Pattersons of the world who write a new book every you know, two weeks, so you mm -hmm. don't have to worry necessarily about keeping up with them. But then you have other authors who it takes them, you know, a year or more to get to the next book. So sometimes we do miss series. Uh, we really try not to. So um, you can request that we buy items. We just ask that you don't request things that have not been published yet. Um, if it's something really popular like James Patterson, we're going to buy it anyway, so you don't need to request that. Um, but if we miss the newest book in the series where the author hasn't put out a title in like 18 months, I'm sure I understand. give us a reminder. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, my watch is speaking to us. That's so terrifying. Uh, I don't know if you guys, you know, have Siri, but I've changed her voice several times during this pandemic, so I feel like I'm having conversations with different people. So <laughs> that's what you do when you are self-isolating and you are at home with only your cat to speak to. Uh, <laughs> Cats are not known conversationalists. No, they are not. Mm-hmm. They are not. Uh, what else do we do? Oh, so um, we have programs for adults. So we plan a lot of programs. We usually plan our programs three to six months in advance, sometimes longer. Uh, we have a few meeting rooms in this library, and there's lots of different departments competing for those rooms. So, and outside groups as and well. And outside groups as well, yes. So you have to get your stuff in early <laughs> so that you have the room reserved. So, And if it's an activity we're teaching, we have to learn how to do that activity yes. first and make sure we have the supplies. If it's an outside presenter, they mm-hmm. probably also have a complicated schedule to work around. Yeah, so it's a lot of different things that we're juggling. Um, we don't honestly sit around and read, which is... Unfortunate. Unfortunate. <laughs> it's also funny when people are like, oh, it must be so relaxing to be a librarian. You just get to sit around and read all day. And we say, yeah, we wish. <laughs> we wish that's what we did. We read about a lot of really cool sounding We books. do. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for the info, Amy and Sarah. As I mentioned in our previous episode, um, I'm Becky and my focus in the library is on Reader's Advisory. We have several great Reader's Advisory tools at Carnegie Stout that you can use right from your couch. The first, which I briefly mentioned before, is the book match service that we offer. You will need your library barcode to fill out the form, so make sure you have that handy. After filling out your contact info, you can choose what format you prefer your, prefer your books in. Um, obviously, right now, ebooks would be make the most sense for everyone. You can mark all of your favorite genres and list several books and authors that you both like and dislike. We also ask that you explain why you liked or disliked a certain author or book because it gives us a better idea of what to recommend for you. Then go ahead and select what you're in the mood to read and comment with any other details that might be helpful to us. Submit the form and we'll send you a list of 10 to 15 books to read. Super easy. Um, To get access to the form, go to our main website, which is debut.lib.ia.us, click on Adult Services, and scroll down to the Recommendations link. That will take you to the book match form where you can fill out directly on our website. Otherwise, um, you can also just email us you at librarian at dubuque.lib.ia.us and we can send you recommendations that way as well. Another reader's advisory resource that we have um, and subscribe to is Novelist Plus. This database helps you find fiction and nonfiction books by describing plots or characters. It helps you find series orders. Um, it'll give you themed book lists and um, author read alike for all <laughs> reading levels. <laughs> Harper, oh. sorry, don't mind Harper. Um, and there's also a link. She's very upset that I locked her in the kitchen. There's also a link on how to access it on our website. <laughs> you I think Harper. Another- 30 seconds. I think Harper wants you to give her a book recommendation. I mean, clearly that's what she's asking for. (laughs) One of the other things that you can do from home to keep yourself engaged with reading is our great reading challenge. So I'm going to turn this over to Angie and she can explain what the great reading challenge is all about. Hello, my name is Angie. I am one of the adult services librarians at Carnegie Stout Public Library. Happy to join the whole crew here um, being involved in the Carnegie Stout podcast. You might recognize me from sitting at the reference or recommendations desk. Also, I am the one who created and runs the Great Reading Challenge, as well as uh, running the two genre book clubs we have, Geek Out and the Mystery and Mayhem book clubs. I just wanted to give a little plug for um, the Great Reading Challenge for those of you who have not heard of it. Um, this is the fifth year we've been doing the Great Reading Challenge, and it is so much fun. It's a reading challenge that lasts the entire year. It is for adults 18 and over, and you can sign up anytime throughout the year. All you're doing is um, you're tracking the books that you read for the for the entire year, so 2020, and the list that we have is all these categories, everything from read a book set during World War II to read a book with a blue cover. There's a lot of different things um, and categories that you can choose from. So the challenge is set up to inspire you to try something new, to create something new, 
um, do something different. Or if you just like to be a part of the group, but you're kind of set in your, in your reading ways, which is totally awesome and fine by, by us, but you can find categories to fit the books that you were already going to read. So you sign up online at our website under uh, adult services tab. There's a great reading challenge. You can register there. You can get your log and you can, um, find out the reading roulette challenge of the month, which is a new thing we started this year. The reading roulette challenge is uh, once uh, every month, if you read a book in the specific category that we choose, it will count as two books read for the reading challenge at the end of the year. Um, and speaking of the end of the year, you follow through the whole year, marking down the books that you read using the list of categories for inspiration. And then you let us know at the end of the year, either in person, by phone, or online, how many books you read for the total, um, for the year. Then we have a little party in January. There are usually prizes, um, and you reach a certain level, whether it's bronze, gold, silver, platinum, or diamond. It's just a fun little, um, program. And I hope some people join it who haven't heard. It's, it's, um, and it's pretty popular finally, and people have a lot of fun. Show, we have a special submission from a local reader to share what he's been listening to and reading and enjoying lately. So without further ado, here's Luke. Hey there, everybody. This is Luke Vorwald, and I'm calling in with my two daughters, Everly and Ophelia. That's <laughs> I got a giggle out of one. I'm calling to try to get my voice heard on the podcast, which, of course, I'm very excited to hear about, being that I like to do a little bit of that myself, calling in to say that we, mostly me, have been reading, uh, rereading the Sandman graphic novel series and also trying to go through Stephen King Dark Tower-related novels, which has been very fun. Um, we think that a good name for your podcast, what, would, what did you say that was again, Ophelia? Oh, that's right. Uh, she thinks that you should call it Check It Out or Check Us Out. So consider that. You know, take it from my cute, adorable daughters. Keep up the cool stuff. We absolutely love the library, or they will at some point. I'll be taking them down to story time as soon as they're able to walk or something. Bye. If you have something you've been reading and enjoying, please send us an audio file to your librarian at dubuque.lib.ia.us and we'll include it in a future podcast as you heard in luke's podcast he believes we should call our podcast something like check it out and that seems to be the general consensus of everyone who has chimed in thus far so we will probably call it check it out unless we get you know a better suggestion so hey we could change the title every week but maybe the next one we'll just say Check out the Carnegie Stout Public Library Adult Services Podcast. Check it out. We would like to take a second to thank our guest contributors for this week's podcast, Angie and Luke. Another big thank you goes out to Ben Eagle, who performed and recorded the music for our Adult Services Podcast. We hope you join us for our next episode next week.